What's going on, everybody? Welcome back into the channel. Today, we're going to be showing off a deck list from our weekly tournament, the 3-0 Han Solo build that ended up winning the first locals in my area. But um, before we get into that, I want to thank everyone for the support lately. Greatly, greatly appreciated, as I always say. You guys have been incredible. And going over the giveaway that's going to be going on this Saturday, 9 p.m. Eastern on my channel. Make sure if you guys want to be a part of it, you're just in the chat. That's all that it requires. Just come in, be in the chat for the time of the draw. The stream will be going live at 9 p.m. Does that mean the drawing is going to be at 9 p.m.? I'm going to be opening up a case. And at the end of the opening, I'm going to be drawing out of the viewers for the giveaway. But you see the giveaway on the screen as to what's going to be in it. We have a box, some sleeves, and some promos. And I hope you guys enjoy the content so far. We're going to be bringing more giveaways as well to get back to you guys. Because obviously I could not be doing this without you guys, your guys' support. So I'm going to keep on bringing you guys stuff as well. But without further ado, we have our 3-0 Han Solo build. This is from someone from my LGS. I'm not taking credit for the build. I got permission to talk about it on the channel. And that's what I'm going to be doing at least once a week. Uh, the winner of the LGS, as long as they agree that I can do this, I'm going to talk about their deck list, the strengths, the weaknesses, and kind of go over that. We're also going to include the sideboards. So it's going to be a little bit different than the normal deck building videos, but still. And then on top of that, obviously, you know, we're going to go into some matches from the tournament and kind of show off some of the combos and the highlights of the deck. So that's how we're going to rock this video. I hope you guys are excited for that. If you guys are new and enjoying the content, make sure you hit that sub button. Support is always appreciated on this channel. Without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right into this 3 and Ohan solo deck list. We're going to start off with the leader here. For an action, put a card from your hand into play as a readied resource, pretty much. And at the end, at the start of the next action phase, defeat the resource you control. That's really good. You can use this to get out three cost units on turn one, and it doesn't defeat them. So yes, people were saying, you know, sneak attack you can go ahead. You can get that out as well, but you get to keep the three cost unit on the field. It doesn't get to attack the first turn that you play it, but then you're on to turn two and able to attack with it, which is pretty strong. You get those abilities to turn early, you know, took advantage of that and it really, really helped. And then obviously it takes six resources to use this epic action, but on the turn where you have five resources, you can use this ability, make you have six resources, right? So you have six ready resources, you bring them out, you attack, then you get the resource off the top of your deck readied, and then you have seven resources. It's just, you're, and then you're able to, you know, put down like crazy things like Mace Windu that turn or Han Solo that turn. And it's just like, if everything falls into place with this deck, this deck can go really fast. And then, you know, you can get, you can cheat out these really, really big units so, so early. And that's what made this deck really strong. It ended up playing against a Thrawn deck, Darth Vader, and an Iden deck. So that's those are the decks that it ended up beating to get the three and zero. But still, you can you're going to be able to see in a little bit the combos that you can do with this deck. And it's like there are some things that could be a problem with this deck, but it, it was really consistent, and you didn't really see that. I think there's only one match, and I'll talk about it at the end when we go to the strengths and weaknesses of what happened in that match. But again, the deck is overall very strong very fast and if your opponent doesn't really have the answers it can kind of take over let's go ahead and talk about the base that we ran um he chose tarkin town tarkin town obviously for an epic action you deal three damage to a non-leader damaged unit so if he ends up swinging into something and it doesn't get taken out and he really needs it gone he can go ahead and use his epic action to take it out he did say at the end he didn't feel like it was really necessary you could use the five hp base and you can be fine, but you know, having that extra three damage at any given point is a good insurance, I feel like. So Tarkin Town is pretty good. And so obviously, deck it wants to go ahead, cheat out resources early, and then be able to spit out bigger units turn earlier than your opponents. And you can kind of establish a decent board from the very beginning, and then you know, you take advantage from there. If your opponent doesn't have answers to those units coming out early you can kind of steamroll them and you'll see that in some of these uh these replays some of the combos that you can do but let's go ahead and get into the deck list so i'm not going to be doing this like my typical deck list i'm just going to kind of go over you know some of the uh, combos right so 
you're going to see the deck list on there, but we're just going to talk about a few of the combos that you're able to see. First off, I want to talk about Ezra Bridger. Being able to get Ezra Bridger out on the first turn is really, really strong because you can do combos into your next turn. So what happens is you get Ezra onto the first, first turn, Ezra comes out, right? Then you go ahead, next turn, he's able to attack as a three cost unit, three, four, getting three damage off on attack is pretty good. And then also when this unit completes an attack, look at the top card of your deck and you may play it or discard it or leave it, right? So this allows for Han Solo, right? The big thing with Han Solo is that he runs out of cards pretty fast because he's putting them down as resources, right? So if you end up using Ezra to play things off the top of your deck rather than using cards from your hand, you can save those cards in hand to make sure that you have things for, you know, mid to late game. And that might be one of the struggles with a Han Solo deck, but with Ezra coming out early, you can take advantage of his ability to make sure that doesn't really happen. Another card that's really good in the deck is Zeb, right? So if the defender was defeated, if this thing is swinging over you, you may deal four damage to another ground unit. It's just really good control. It's a bigger unit. Five five is pretty solid. And, you know, it's able to swing over small units and then deal a lot of damage. I want to talk about Mace Windu. Like I said before, on the turn where you start off with five resources, you can use Han Solo's ability. You cheat out a resource, you're at six. You cheat out Han Solo. You attack with Han Solo. You take the top card of your deck. You put it down as a resource. You have seven resources to just kind of bring out Mace Windu. And then if he defeats a unit, you get to ready him. So you can get multiple attacks potentially on that turn. And he has ambush, obviously. So that is just a really, really good combo that you can do with Mace Windu and Han Solo. It just is really strong and it's pretty crazy. And then I want to talk about the Han Solo unit card because people were saying how bad it is, blah, blah, blah. And like, yeah, I understand it's a seven cost, but it has ambush. And while attacking, if it defeats the damage, like if it defeats the defender, it doesn't take damage. It deals damage before the uh, defender does to him. And if the defender is defeated, it's just basically getting shoot first on every attack as long as you're taking out that unit. And the thing is, is that Han Solo can swing over majority of the leaders, right? So it's it's a very good card, especially in this deck. You can get it out early. With the Han, the same Han Solo combo that I talked about with Mace Window, you can get it out early and do the same thing. So Han Solo in this deck is very, very strong, which makes sense. Han Solo deck with Han Solo should be pretty strong. Let's go over to the space units. There's a couple of units I want to talk about over here. And Red 3 is one of those units. Red 3 is very, very strong, especially in this deck. If you get it out on turn one, it you can see how many heroic units, although the aspects are not on the board, majority of the deck is heroic units. And every, actually every unit in the deck is heroic. So everything, getting that out on turn one and allowing your units to get raid one off the get-go is really, really strong. And then another piece that I think is very strong is Millennium Falcon on turn one. What's cool about Millennium Falcon is that, yes, you do have to destroy a resource if you put it down early uh, with Han Solo, but Millennium Falcon has uh, the effect that when you ready your cards during your regroup phase, you either pay one or you return it to your hand. So one, if it has damage and you don't want it to lose it, go ahead, bring it back to your hand. But two, you can go ahead and exhaust a resource to then keep it on the field and then destroy that resource with Han Solo. And then it's like you're just at normal resources. So Han Solo Millennium Falcon combo, obviously that was probably in mind when making the game. It's just a really strong combo, especially if you get Millennium Falcon down on turn one, because you get to deal that free damage on the first turn and you get to keep it on and still stay at the same pace as your opponent, because you'll be able to put down that third resource. Yes, you have to destroy a resource, but you'll still be at that three, same as your opponent. So that's a really good combo. And then black one. We said it before that the hand size thing is important for Han Solo. So having black one, being able to play it, if you have nothing in your hand, just being able to draw those three cards, that could really save you. Han Solo might struggle against decks that cause him to discard cards, and that could become an issue, but still, 
black one kind of gets around that. If you still have black one in your hand, you have no hand size and you have six resources, go ahead, drop this. You draw three. You can kind of try to stabilize in that regard in terms of hand size and hand problems, right? And then we're going to talk about <laughs> probably the best event in the deck is probably a four a cause I believe in. Being able to reveal the top four cards of your deck and then for every heroic card of them, you get to deal one damage. So that's pretty strong. You have the potential to do up to four damage, right? And in this deck, you really only have, I think it's six misses. It's Surprise Strike and Waylay are the only things that'll miss off this trigger. But then on top of that, you're able to put any cards that you want in the discard pile on the discard pile and then put the remaining cards in any order on top of your deck. It allows you to set up the way that you want to set up and you can do a ton of damage, one, and then two, make sure that your next couple of turns are where you want them to be. So that's really, really strong. And then the final event we're going to talk about are, is You Are My Only Hope. Being able to look at the top card and play something for five or less is pretty good. And if you have five or less in your base, you can play something for free. So having five or less HP is pretty scary, but still being able to play anything for free in this deck. But on top of that, majority of the deck is five or less in terms of cost mace windu han solo and black one are the only things that are over and if you're playing mace windu han solo or black one for one or two then that's completely fine right you're, you're going to be able to play that's still if you're on five resources and you have your my only hope you're playing everything in this deck yes you might have to use the remaining two of your resources but still you're going to be getting something strong in return it's definitely worth playing you saw some really good combos from that in the matches and Really, the consistency of the deck kind of surprised me in terms of, like, I know that Han Solo is solid. I know that being able to cheat out some of these units well in advance is very, very good. But the biggest problem that people may have with Han Solo is the not having the hand, right? So if you get to a point where you just don't have the stuff in your hand and you kind of get stagnant, your opponent can come back and kind of swing over this deck. But the, the first tournament for Han Solo at my LGS, the deck was great. It was really smooth. I think there was only one hiccup in a match, but still. Let's go over the sideboard real quick. So then we can hop into a couple of matches. Hopping right over into the sideboard. We have just five cards. I don't know the specifics on the amount of cards like of each, right? So I'm just going to go over each card that's in a sideboard. And you can kind of decide what cards to put in and the quantity of what to put in, right? But obviously he's going to be... Ha so he has Spec Force Soldier in his sideboard. He didn't have any in his main deck list. It makes sense. You kind of... If you're playing against a heavy Sentinel deck, you then throw these in in game two or in game three if you need be. So it makes a lot of sense that it wasn't in the initial deck list, but it being in the sideboard, perfect sense to me. Rogue Operative, it's pretty strong. It has Raid 2, uh, Raid two and Saboteur. So again... It's another way to get around those Sentinels. He doesn't have in his initial deck list many ways to get around Sentinel. So he has that in his sideboard as like, hey, this is what we're going up against. Let's adjust and add in these two cards. He does play, obviously, just the one Mace Windu. If he needs to put in another Mace Windu, he can. He plays two in his normal deck. Obviously, his sideboard is only going to have one. Sneak Attack is pretty good. It allows you to put out a card for three less and then you get to ready it so then it's pretty good you can get something out there kind of early and then it just has to get defeated at the regroup phase so that's something you have to kind of think about and then outmaneuver if you're playing against someone who is spamming units in either space or ground and you're kind of getting blown back you can go ahead and add some out maneuvers. I don't know how many he has in the sideboard. Again, you can kind of choose the ratios. I just wanted to show you he has five different cards in his sideboard. And obviously the only one that I know of is Mace Windu at one. But still, these all make a lot of sense to have in your sideboard. Especially those saboteurs and then the spec, uh, spec force soldier being able to get rid of Sentinel for a phase. It's just really good. It's a good way to kind of adjust to someone playing a lot of Sentinels. So... That's where we're rocking with our sideboard. The deck, you know, let's go over the strengths and weaknesses now. The strengths, obviously, as we already stated, being able to cheat out units early is incredibly strong. The synergy with the deck 
being pretty being all heroic cards for the most part and having for a clause i believe in being able to do a ton of damage and then being able to kind of set himself up for future plays is also something that we saw that was really really strong with the deck the the ability to you know boost up his units using his other units like red three and stuff like that very strong and so i think the deck had a lot of synergy it was fast and it had answers to some things like for a cause i believe in was surprisingly now we all know it's a very good card but it was surprisingly like deciding in a, in a few games like yeah someone can put down a couple of sentinels right but if it's late game he just goes ahead and pops damage on you anyway using four calls i believe and i believe that there was i think two or three matches where the final damage of the match the person thought that they might have been safe using a sentinel and then boom four calls i believe and kind of finish off the match so i think the synergy with this deck is very very good the weaknesses as we already stated is that the hand size can become an issue if you're putting down your resources and you're you know your hands thinning out and you don't really have a lot of you know draw power at certain points you can end up getting into like you stall out and then your opponent can come back and that gives them an opportunity to you know potentially win the game so the deck's main weakness is stalling out in my opinion being like if you are putting down a resource every turn just to cheat out units and then you're just putting out extra cards out of your hand you're gonna get to a point where if you're not gonna be getting black one to draw those three cards it could become an issue so that's that's the main weakness of the deck is just stalling out and then allowing your opponent to come back into games that being said i think that ryan played the deck really really well he didn't cheat out cards every single turn he he knew how to pilot the deck he played very well he put down cards when needed cheated out units when needed and that's pretty much how you have to play han solo if you just keep cheating out cards every single turn you're gonna hit a wall and stall out but if you find that perfect you know rhythm where you know every so often you're spitting out units and then it allows you to kind of build up your hand and make sure you have the cards that you want it's just really good and again for cause i believe in being able to set up your future place to give you what you need kind of helps with the stalling out as well so overall very solid deck pretty fast and there was only i think one match where he stalled out uh and that was you know still he was three and oh and he was six and one overall very very good showing for this han solo deck so if you do like this deck consider trying it out obviously i'm not taking credit for the deck it was someone in my lgs and we're, we want to give credit there uh ryan had a very good deck list i just want to show it off to you guys so you guys can kind of enjoy it that being said we're going to show off some of the matches i'm not going to be able to play too too many maybe i'll play two matches and kind of show you the different matchups that it dealt with very very well and some of the combos so let's go over hop over to a match a couple matches from the lgs see you over there all right guys welcome back in we are showing off the first matchup between han solo and thrawn now i'm only gonna be showing one of the best of three just because there's a really good combo in here to really kind of show off how the deck's supposed to run for han solo so let's go ahead and hop into the match we're just going to be doing some post commentary for now until i get some better mics we'll keep the live commentary going in the future but still we rolled for initiative thrawn got initiative and you're going to kind of see the power of han solo being able to kind of like ramp up but like not even like the traditional ramp using green just being able to put down resources from their hand and kind of going off that way all right the two resources are down thrawn has the ability to look up card of each deck as most of you probably know i'm just gonna go ahead play out and then see this is where we're gonna see han solo being able to put down a card from hand now putting him at three resources on the first turn getting out ezra bridger on the first turn and then he uh passes after that but still it he has to go ahead and defeat the unit uh defeat the resource which he does but still being able to get that ezra bridger on the first turn is really strong so we're back up i get to go ahead up oh, someone subscribe well uh, thank you jesse for subscribing <laughs> while recording i have to turn off my notifications when i'm recording but hey shout out to jesse but still um i'm gonna go ahead and play 
Asteroid Sanctuary on this turn. My deck wants to go ahead and, you know, try to stall out his deck. But you're going to see Han Solo's matchup against Thrawn is pretty solid. And it's going to be quite the flip in a little bit, probably. Because obviously, you know that Han Solo goes 3 0. So he's going to go ahead and he's going to go for uh, the Freedom Fighters or Fighters for Freedom. They're really good in this deck because he plays a red card. He has a good amount of red cards in his deck. He can go ahead and deal out extra damage to my base, keeping up the momentum with the speed. So that's kind of scary for me. And I'm just going to go ahead and attack with their, uh, with my uh, unit here and deal two damage to the base. And then he's going to grab the initiative. And then we're going to go ahead and hop over to the next turn. Now, I could have saved the um Astro Sanctuary, but I chose to use it on that turn. But here we go. This is where it gets kind of crazy. So him having the initiative is kind of good for him in this part, part because in my head, I'm like, okay, he's going to attack with Ezra. Hopefully he doesn't hit something crazy and I can go ahead and exhaust his fighter, uh, fighters for freedom. And I see that I can do that with the top card of his deck. I can cool. I can go ahead and exhaust it. He attacks with Ezra. He sees the fleet Lieutenant on the top of his deck, right? So that's not good for me because he decides to go ahead and he's going to play it. So he pays the three, he plays it, and then he swings with Fighters for Freedom for a six damage. And that, against a Thrawn deck, that's really good. I, at that point, am like, oh boy, because that was a huge, obviously dealing six damage on an attack from a single unit. So he got nine damage in a single turn. Right? In a single action, he got 9 damage, and that sets you back. That's essentially 33% of my base, and I was like, well, here I am. I have to go ahead and destroy something before I start taking a ton of damage. I didn't want to start taking a bunch of damage from the, the extra red cards coming out, but still, you kind of see the strength of the Han Solo deck, and at this point, I have to try to survive long enough to where I can get a board wipe, or try to get one of my big ships out there but you see that big play Ezra having Ezra on turn one and then being able to swing and getting off a massive six hit off of Ezra's swings so that's nine total off of one action incredibly strong it's great value and so you're kind of seeing how the Han Solo deck wants to play he didn't put down a card from hand for his action he just kept it at the four all he needed to do was attack with Ezra, get the Fleet Lieutenant, and he's in a really good spot. I only have one unit on board. He has two. Both of his do more damage than mine, so I'm at the point where I have to try to maybe put down a Sentinel or play around that. So we're both at five, and this is probably where you're going to go ahead and see the another Ezra trigger. He's going to see the Han Solo off the top. So... I have to kind of decide, do I want to take damage or do I want to try to stall him out a little bit? I know what he can do with Han Solo here. So I could wait to pop the Han Solo off the top of the deck and hit the Han Solo. But just in case he wants to maybe save it, it's, it's kind of hard. This is like a cat and mouse game at this point because I'm taking a ton of damage. So I choose to exhaust the Fleet Lieutenant. Probably not the best play. Again, I could have stopped the Han Solo when it ends up coming in but i was like maybe it doesn't come in right away maybe he wants to save the cards in hand that's what i was kind of hoping for trying to save the cards in hand and then kind of go that route but he does end up going with the the leia here and he exhausts my unit so i can't do damage so we're playing this exchange of exhaust so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna play my gunship here that's very strong because now I can go ahead and I can attack the ground from space. And that's one of the main things about the Thrawn deck. But still, he has a ton of units on board. And he uses Han Solo's ability to put down a card from hand. It puts him back up to uh, four resources. And that's a problem for me because he now has six total resources. And he has four playable resources, right? So he brings out Han Solo. He then 
because he I took initiative. I had nothing else I could really do. He's going to spend the three. Go ahead, bring out the red uh, red three. Give his Han Solo raid, and on attack he takes that off. He has two more resources to play with if he chooses to do so, but he does have to destroy two of his resources at the start of next turn. But still, it is incredible value. And look at his board. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that Ezra swing into uh, Fleet Lieutenant set me back so much to the point where I was like, oh gosh. I, at this point, I don't think I can even, I need outmaneuvers and I don't think I was drawing them, right? So I have to hope for outmaneuvers. I was getting a lot of no good to me deads, that's for sure. But the speed of Han Solo I, I do have an outmaneuver. Okay, good. So I got the outmaneuver. I exhaust the entirety of the ground. So kind of stall him out. I should have actually remembered that, but my brain's all mushy, but still. Being able to exhaust the ground, kind of trying to buy some time for me to try to gain some type of momentum. But overall, he then plays. So he goes ahead and he swings with red three. He deals uh, three damage to my base trying to find my dice here. So I'm still taking a ton of damage. And I go ahead and I play Entrenched on Han Solo. Essentially, I could have waited. I could have attacked one of his units with my Starfighter, but I Entrenched Han Solo maybe a turn early because then he does get down Chewbacca. And Chewbacca has Sentinel. But the issue is that when I attack it, it readies up. And... Even though I'm attacking into the ground with my my gunship there, I would have to attack into Chewie. So that's a little bit of a blunder on my part. I should have tried to get rid of something, even if it was the Fleet Lieutenant or the Leia. Probably would have swung into the Leia, making sure that I kept my HP off, like the damage off, because he could have Tarkin Town at any point. But still, I chose to do it a little bit too late. I just go ahead and I throw the base trying to get some damage here and then I swing into the red red three to make sure that I am not going to get the extra damage from raid from every single unit down there but again I have to hope for another outmaneuver so that, that's the game we're playing right now I need a bunch of outmaneuvers to stall out his ground units to make sure I can get up to my bigger space units right so the issue is, is that I was not drawing that. And uh, yeah, we're going to kind of see how the end of the game kind of plays out here. Because obviously he has the unit advantage. And that's kind of like, I know it looks bad for Thrawn, but if I had the outmaneuvers and then I get to eight resources and I play the AT-AT -AT suppressor or my super laser blast, get rid of all of his units. Because again, I have a lot, well, like a little bit of units, but that's usually how my Thrawn games go. I end up taking over at the end, but... You saw the speed, the ability of Han Solo being able to cheat out these units early, the ability of Ezra popping off early, getting that fleet lieutenant. It was just really good synergy throughout the deck. And once that nine damage like action came in, He's no good to me, um, it just kind of it was too much for Thrawn to handle. So. Uh, no no good to me dead on fleet lieutenant but it didn't matter because i just ended up getting absolutely blasted so the the overall the overall like game right there you again that combo with ezra really really strong but you could do that with a ton of different units and you're going to kind of see that in the next match i show i'm going to show two total matchups it's going to be a matchup against thrawn here and we're going to go ahead over and hop over to his matchup his game three against vader so let's be over there all right here we have the matchup between han solo and vader han solo starting with the initiative and we're gonna go see how this one turns out obviously we kind of know how this one turns out but he's gonna go ahead first turn use han solo's ability giving him three resources off the top off rip three resources very strong i don't think there's a game where han solo is not doing this unless he doesn't have a three cost unit in hand well, then at that point i think he's mulliganing the Vader player plays down General Tag. Feels bad not to be able to get the 
ability off of it but if that's your only two cost drop you kind of have to do it turn one red three is very strong so you're seeing han solo kind of popping off in the beginning all of his units as we already went over they're all heroic units are all going to have raid off the rip and so Vader takes initiative and we go ahead and head to the regroup phase but still han solo having red three out turn one is very very scary for the vader player you can kind of see the imperial interceptor over there so he does have an answer for the red three but he does not have an answer this turn which is kind of not ideal but he chooses to play down his shiny shore trooper over there which is very nice and then we have fleet lieutenant coming out getting that extra damage so dealing with five damage off first turn is pretty good and then again next turn fleet lieutenant is going to be able to deal that extra damage off of raid so that's really good it's just you're seeing the synergy with the deck and you also realize that you're not seeing han solo's ability here off turn two right, so that's pretty good he's keeping those cards in hand vader then goes ahead and he deals the one damage to both the base and the fleet lieutenant because he played the villainy unit that turn they choose the uh, trade tag into the fleet lieutenant not needing to worry about the extra damage because if it was dealing four damage that's a pretty big hit on a 25 hp base he only has 20 hp left so that would have been pretty strong so i think trading there is pretty good overall because he does still have a they both have units on board so this is looking okay this is like an even start even with the cheating out the red three on turn one and dealing the extra five damage with the fleet lieutenant so he chooses to go ahead and attack with the red three that's probably the good uh the better play there making sure you get that damage off when you can you see the imperial interceptor coming out the red three goes down taking that three damage Vincent, thank you so much for the sub. Uh, I'm going to start taking off my <laughs> my uh, notifications. But still, he, uh, you see Leia come out here, exhausting the short trooper, so he's not going to take any extra damage. He goes ahead, he cheats out the resource, he plays out the Millennium Falcon, and it's ready. So it deals the three damage into the base right away. And yeah, that's kind of how this works. And you're going to see one of the combos here. He does that, he exhausts the resource for the Millennium Falcon, keeping it in play, and then he's able to then defeat it with Han Solo. So that's one of the best combos you can do with this deck, and it's it's extremely strong. Being able to play out a Leia and then play out a Millennium Falcon on a turn where you only start off with four resources, if you're not ramping with green, and being able to do that is pretty good. So, and then you know you get to keep it on without being behind to start the turn. You see the ambush for the fleet, ah, uh, not the fleet, the super late session coming out. So you're seeing some ramp on the Vader side, but the Millennium Falcon's still out there. He does choose to go ahead and just swing at the base. I mean, at this point, he has a ton of damage on base. There's no reason for him to stop swinging at the base for any moment here. So the Interceptor is choosing to go into the base. Because he has to now try to keep up with the damage. This is where it kind of gets crazy. Uh, four claws, I believe in. You're going to see... So he whiffs on one. He gets the three damage. But three damage onto the base. Really strong. And then he gets to put cards into his discard pile. Or on top of his deck in any order he wants. So he can kind of decide his next couple of plays here. You're already seeing that the base on the Vader side is already so low because of the amount of pressure that he was able to play with the Millennium Falcon, the five damage off the red three. It's just, it piles up quickly. I don't think people realize that how fast the damage piles up. I am your father. Uh, he, the Vader player chooses to go with I am your father, potentially for just for the card draw, but also being able to take out a unit if he doesn't get the card draw would have been pretty good. But... He elects to just give him the three cards. Smart play there, because he can still then go ahead and attack into base with Millennium Falcon. So, and you saw his draws off of four claws I believe in. There was another four claws I believe in. So all he really has to do realistically is get him down to that two, three, four HP range. And the potential of ending the game is there 
for the Han player. So he chooses to exhaust three resources and play Surprise Strike, and that's going to put him a ton of damage onto him. And that's, again, he's now down to two HP. He can play for a cause, I believe, in at any given point here, if he has it on top of his deck, or if he draws it next turn. He's pretty much got it at this point. But Vader's coming out, and we're going to see how this plays out. He's going to take the initiative. That's really all he has to do. So he doesn't need to do the Han Solo, put down six resources, bring out Han Solo, get to seven. He has one card in hand, and yeah. I believe that the Vader player does know that Four of Claws, I believe, it is coming, and that's a ton of damage coming his way. So I think he's... He's accepting his fate at this point. So we're going to go ahead and see Grandma Tarkin. He's going to kind of see if he can maybe get something off the top of the deck. All right. Now we're back. We're going to be seeing Vader swing in. Uh, he's going to do two damage to the Millennium Falcon off the Vader. And then he's going to go ahead and intercept there and blow up the Millennium Falcon. So trying to just get any damage off the board. He does bring up the 12, and then you see him at 16 total damage. He's up to 9 HP left, or down to 9 HP left, and then you have 2 on the other side, but you know what's coming here. We already went over it. It's just essentially 4 claws, I believe, in right off the rip. He doesn't need the units on the board. He just has to make sure he draws at least 2 Shiroic units, and as you guys saw from the deck list, it's just... Oh, another 4 claws, I believe, in. So... There's the two damage needed to win, and you see a good handshake there. It was a very good match, honestly. Um, just the the few plays from from Han Solo, you can just kind of see the synergy throughout the deck and the speed that it kind of provides. It, I think, it caught people off guard. This matchup, um, I do think that one of the things that you have to kind of worry about with Han Solo when you're playing Han Solo is decks that kind of discard from your hand. So Force Lightnings and stuff like that, you can kind of deal with Han Solo, but we didn't see many Force Lightnings or any at all or any other cards that were kind of discarding cards from Han Solo's hand. Because if you discard his hand and make it so he doesn't have a hand, he can't use Han Solo's ability. And then he also has no cards in hand to do anything on top of that. And then you can kind of try to come back into game. So that's kind of how, how you want to deal with Han Solo. But overall, the deck ran super smooth. It only had one hiccup, one match where he kind of stalled out. But it was piloted very well. And, you know, I hope you guys enjoy the deck list. I, get, I got permission to showcase it to you guys. And that's what I'm going to kind of do weekly. At least I'm going to try to, if the person allows, the person who ends up going 3-0. Or it doesn't even have to be 3-0. But, like, a person who has a solid deck. And something that I want to kind of show you guys. As long as they agree, I'm going to showcase more decks from the LGS and local scene with matchups from the tournaments itself. So I hope you guys enjoy that. And I'll see you guys on the next video.